Thank you. The, that Las Vegas prize thing um, just reminds me a little bit of a uh, coach that coached me at university, won the high, high school championship out in, uh, in British Columbia before. And he told me, he said, if you ever want to coach high school, I've got the plan for you. And I said, oh, how you mean you have a plan? And he, he, was a, he was a good basketball X's and O's type of guy, but he was a better organizer. And he said, this is what I did. This is how I won the BC High School Championship. He said, I took every one of the feeder schools. He said, I took every, every single coach of the junior schools. I took them in a van and I paid for their way. And we drove down to Las Vegas from Vancouver and we went to the clinic down there. And he said, we had the best time ever. He said, now I made them all go to the clinic and then on the way back, I had a clinic at the university and I taught them, or, or at the high school, and I taught all the feeder schools what I wanted them to do. And all the feeder schools, how, you know, but it, it was more than that. It was about fundraising, everything like that. This is what you're going to do. These are the tournaments. You're gonna, and it brought all the feeder schools together. So they had a league. And then all those kids came in and ended up going to that high school. And he swears that that's the reason that they won the high school is because they all went in the van to Las Vegas. They all learned the same philosophy. They developed players. And as a result, they had one of the best high schools. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of offensive sets, X's and O's, that have been my favorites um, throughout the, uh, you know, the, my, my, my coaching with the Raptors um, and you know who they were for and stuff like that. Um, and then uh, if there's anything specific that you want to see, um, uh, like Adam mentioned, uh, I'm, I'm willing to answer questions or, or show you anything. If you, uh, a zone offense um, that, we, that we run, uh, a, a player for a specific guy, a press offense, um, anything like that, I'm willing to go over and, and take it. And then, um, th then I, I, at the end, I wouldn't mind uh, just answering questions about uh, generic coaching things too and talking about some of that. Uh, obviously, uh, the experience with the United States team. I'd like to share some of those things because it was a uh, um, it was a phenomenal experience. So, all right, let's go. Five guys. I like you. Yeah, you want to come out every time. I like it. I like it. A lot of little guys. You four? Perfect. There we go. All right, this play here. This is uh, this is this is one of my favorite plays for Chris. Bob Trying, trying to get him down in the low block all the time. And this set here, um, it was a set not out of the transition set. So if we want to run a set, we always call this our horn set. Uh, a horn set is when we started two bigs on the elbows, two wings in each of the corners. And there's, there's so many different things that you can do out of this set. Uh, horns up, horns up was both guys come up, let the point guard use one. Roll. Okay, use that. Use that one. Roll. Look for it. You got it here. Barnani looking for Bosch. Yes, sir. You you gonna be Barnani? Yeah? Good for you. Good for you. Hang on. <laughs> um, here we go. Another one. Just starting the same horn set. There, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get to the play that I want to in a second here. Start again. Horn set again. I always like this one again. You got, you can tell that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm big on the wheel action. So if the guard can't went to one side, we just call horns out. And again, I always try to keep it simple for big guys. I always try to keep it simple for big guys. All right, horns up, you stay up, right for the screen. Horns out, you go out, right? You go away. So what it would be, it would just be a double stagger for the guy over here, and. You know, I always think, again, try to get fouled. It's pretty tough to guard a guy. Even if he shoots the gap, his defensive player shoots the gap, and he turns the corner, it's pretty hard to jump back in here and take a charge. So, again, trying to get fouled on a play like that is good. Uh, horns down. Okay, quiz. Horns up, you stayed up. Horns out, you went out. What do you think you're going to do on horns down? Hey, very good. Very good. This, is why, this is how we have to do it for NBA players. Come together, though. Come together, and you take it to a side. Take it over to a side. 
As soon as he gets over here, all right, you go through and stop right there. And we're going to go just go double screen down. And I always like to lock the arms here, right there, right there, and, and set that, swing the ball up here. Now, the other thing that you can do, you, simple little things you can do on this, after you set this screen here, you're just going to run interference and you're going to step in on his man. If you don't have the shot, we're going to swing it right over there or a swing to get it inside. All right. So this is a bunch of stuff out of the horn set. All right. the, the big play, the play that I like though, um, we call it horns, um, horns wide, horns wide, and it's for Bosch, okay? So on horns wide, you guys are going to jump out wide, all right? So we're going to give it to them. Now, I always like to make a big guard another big out here, especially when the, the, what we're trying to do is get a post up here, okay? So we've got, we've got the wide action here. You're going to go across, and you're going to set a screen for the other big. So you're going to run some interference. Bigs don't want to get too involved in jumping out here. They want to sit at home a little bit more. All right? As the ball gets reversed right here, you're going to come up, and it's a, and it's a, it's a rip as fast as you can on the guy guarding Bosch. And actually, we do it as he throws the basketball. The one thing, if I'm guarding here and the guy gives it up, the natural reaction for anybody is to relax a little bit when the man gives the ball up. All right? Oh, he's giving it up. I don't have to worry about anything. That's when I want this guy to get hit. All right? And, and so the ball is here. You've got it. You're looking inside. You reverse it, and then it's a pass and step. So come on up and set it. And you, and it's a hard cut off the screen. Go ahead. Looking for the ball there. Now, one of the things, and, and this is where I, I wish they would change the rules in basketball and give the second assist, that hockey assist that we get, because angles play such a big part in the game. And you, right here, I don't know what, what degree this is, but that's the only space that you had to make a play to get Bosch the basketball after he cut off the screen is right there. All right? If you swing the ball here, right, you're not going to get the assist, but this is the angle that this guy has to get the ball inside. All right? And, and we, we, we want to be able to recognize where you can swing the basketball, how to swing the basketball, and get it in. Okay, let's do it again. Horns wide again. Again, it's just a, it's a very good play to get a very solid post-up player. Drag the big out away from the basket. He's out away from the basket. He gives it up. You got to be here a lot quicker than that. Yep. And then a swing, swing to get him the basketball inside. Okay. Um, another really good play that we did this, we call this horns pop. Okay. Horns pop is a, um, again, it was a, it was a great play for us because it was, um, if, if we had, you know, say, say we had Bosch and Bargnani here, all right? And we would pass the ball to Bargnani, but we would pop him. We would pop him out. So it's, it, it's a pop, okay? As this happens, um, so you're going to go opposite. You're going to go opposite the, the basketball. You're going to go opposite the basketball to the corner, okay? Go. What we try to do here... Uh, Portland Trailblazers, when they made their good run, they had Brandon Roy, uh, and this is a good, this is a very good set. If you have a, a a ball handler who is not your primary ball handler, who can still deal with the with the screen and roll, and they would run this for uh, Brandon Roy all the time, and this was their this was their bread and butter. They actually stole this play from the Greeks, who beat the United States uh, in that game when they lost at the World Championships. Uh, this is the play in the semifinals. This is the play that uh, um, in, in my time working with Coach K, I think we watched that game 20 times in, in our preparation for the next World Championships because they weren't going to lose again. And this, this is the play that, that got them on it. So um, ball goes here. You're going to set a cross screen. You're going to come off it. So we're setting a, a, we're setting a, a two on three screen. And, and, and you're looking for a little bit of a post up, but they don't really want that. You've gone straight to the corner. You don't get the ball here. You go to the corner. You come straight down. And you go straight up the middle. 
Give it to them, and then you go straight back up and get them. Right? So what it is, I mean, the game is about finishing on high screen rolls or side screen rolls. All right, let's do this whole thing again. What, what the European teams do so well is the movement that they create. A lot of NBA teams will come down and they have the talent. A guy like Derek Rose doesn't want to run a play, he just wants a screen so he can attack it. Uh, the European teams, they have movement that gets you in so that the final part of the game is the screen and roll, and you don't know where it's coming from. Derek Rose, you know he's going to do it, but he's good enough that he can, he can do it. With the, with the European teams, you don't know where it's going to come from. You don't know who's going to be involved in it. All right, so let's just do it again. The, the key part is that this guy here is a threat because now any kind of help on a screen is taken away by a guy who can shoot it, and we, this is where we would have Bargnani. Okay, so go ahead. Go to the corner. Cross screen, right? Cross screen. Maybe you get a little bit of a change here. Pin down and right back up and get them. Stop. Okay, now I want you coming. I want you coming this way, though. Okay, I want you coming this way. So we've got a we've got a guy right here. This guy is the big, so he's here. He's giving the ball up, but that's why it's got to happen real quick. It's a, it's a it's a pin down. All right, and then right back up and screen here, and they use it quick. There's no way that this guy can get from a shooting big to a guy rolling right away. Okay, let's do it again. We'll, we're getting better with the speed. No, no, you're good. You stay over in the corner. Well, back it up. You just go fill the corner. You're cross screening. Two and three are cross screening for each other. Did I make you go last time? My fault. Give it to the big, extend the floor, cross screen, and go right back up and get them. And there. Good. Okay. Uh, I mentioned it earlier. The play, the play of the uh, year in the NBA last year, Phoenix did it. Obviously, they have a very good point guard who can, who can run it a lot. But it's a, it's a straight high screen and roll. All right. Let's go with... Um, well, everybody, go one four low to start. All right, um, everybody, everybody in the NBA. As soon as one team has run something and they're successful, everybody scouts everybody. You pick it up and you and you start running it. Traditional high screen roll. You come up, use it, roll. You replace, roll hard to roll hard. All right, and teams figure out defensively. They know what they're going to do. They're going to. You know, this guy's going to stay here, and they're going to show, and he's going to sprint back here. This guy's going to stunt, and we're going we're to have it covered. What the sun started doing, let's do it again. So you come up and set a middle screen, and just stop, stop. What the sun started doing was taking this guy here, and as he went up, he got into the middle of the floor, and he would come ball side right here. All right. So that now when you roll, there's nobody who can help except for the man on the weak side over here. And that's where Nash was so good, come on over, at reading this here, he would read and you'd come up and they would either get the lob for the 1.5 points per possession or the three on the cross court pass because there's nobody who can really help that. So the middle guy comes down low there. A lot of times there's different things you can do out of this. Let's just run it, run it again. Good. Now, so what a lot of teams do is they keep the guy here and now they've got a handoff here. As soon as this handoff goes, they've got a back door or this guy can make the same play. Uh, the guy who, who comes to the basketball. So that's just a tweak out of a high screen roll. Um, you know, I talked about passing the ball into the post. If you could ever get, and I think that the, the, one, of the, one of the best teaching points is, is being able to, you know, do the, when the ball goes in the post, set the screen, accept it, reject it. Uh, if you can teach people to play a, a three-man game with a post player, uh, this offense go, is, is dated back to the years when I played on the national team, but uh, I need a guard and a guard, and I need a five-man here. 
and uh, four here, and a, one in the corner. And this is a perfect offense for a lot of coaches that maybe uh, don't have uh, two big players. So you have one, one, one big player, and you want to play four perimeters around them. A lot of teams started doing that. Um, you look at what the Mavericks did last year in the NBA Finals, uh, a team that for, for a lot of it had Jason Kidd, Berea, Jason Terry, and Deshaun Stevenson, uh, four guards on the floor all at the same time, uh, and they win the NBA championship. So uh, you take one side. You come on up, and you drop down a bit. Yeah. So this is just a, a, it's basically a high post offense. A lot of teams, uh, a lot of teams run this. But the simple rule, when the ball goes to the corner, the weak side guy cuts off. So um, back, to the, back in, the, in the national team, Jay, Gerald Kazanowski just was so effective at this. Gerald was a 6'9 player from the University of Victoria who was an exceptional passer and exceptional screener. And one of the reasons that we were able to finish uh, fourth in the 84 Olympics and, and sixth in the 88 Olympics was just a dominant guy inside who was so adept at passing the basketball and, but setting screens. And by the way, teach your kids, if they, if they ever want to get the basketball, set a good screen. That's the number one way to get a ball is if you set a screen, you're going to get the basketball because you're, you set a good enough screen, your man has to help and that's what gets you open for the split second. Anyways, hard cut off and out to the same side if you don't get it. All right? Fill up, reverse the basketball. There you go, swing it. Weak side, always going opposite guy. Hard cut, and you'll get this, you'll get this little cut, same side, out again. That's it, go to the corner, it goes to the corner all the time. You don't cut until it goes to the corner. All right, goes to the corner, other, sweet, out. All right, now, this is just the basic set and movement, all right? So there's not a lot that's going to happen here. Let's run it again, except that when, when the pass goes and these screens are taken away, go ahead, and the big helps for a split second, and a guy who sets the screen always looks to the basketball, clear out to the other side, and he shows up right here. Now we're in a perfect position to play that split post game that I was talking about where the ball has come in here, you've got it. All right, who threw it in? You didn't, you set the screen? Hold it, stop. What are the three things that you can do? Hmm? I can, for him? Yeah. I can down screen for him? Down screen for him? Uh, I can push him through. You can push him through, so he, he rejects the screen, exactly. And then the last thing that you can do is that you can slip the screen. And again, it's about playing against your man. And your man starts coming down here, and he's going to think about maybe switching. A lot of teams will switch the guard to guard here. You come down, and you set it, and you cut right off. And if you have a big guy who can pass the basketball, this is a great area to be able to sit and make plays on this. All right? The other thing, um, anyways, that's just a, a, a high post X's and O's play that will get you good movement. And uh, it, I, I really think it's important when you teach the um, – the, the screen on the perimeter is there. Teams like uh, you know, Rick Adelman is very good at it, Phil, Phil Jackson. This is all part of the triangle stuff, right? We've talking about a triangle on one side, the ball going into the post, and the, and the weak side action. So a lot of the teams that have been very successful in the NBA end up getting into this. Uh, I guess the, the last, um, and then I'll open it up a little bit, the last offense that a lot of teams run is the same thing in the NBA where you've got the basketball and either guard has it. And they just call this blast, all right? And, and it's, um, you can swing it out to the outside. Come on up a bit. Yeah, come on up. You, you, come, you come up. And again, you cut off the post. Go ahead, cut off. And you cut off. Go ahead. Down to the low block. Hard cut, yeah. You just use, use the big guy, though. Use him as a screener. All right, what it does, it just creates some movement. And again, the big guy don't want to play outside that much. So the big guy pops here. Once you've got the ball here, you're face up and you look, and then it's a simple pin down. Pin down and a pin down. All right, so you've got those options right there. This is called blast. It creates good movement. And let's do it again. Let's do it a little bit cleaner.
Go, cut, cut. Both guys can cut. Go. And now you, no, you've got it. Once, once the big guy has it, we've got the ball where we want it. It's in the middle of the floor. And what a lot of teams do, again, and, and, and as I said before, I think the dribble handoff is a very difficult thing to guard out here. I think it's even harder to guard when it's here. So let's go down again and set that double pin down. And now, hold it, uh, guys, I want both guys underneath, and I want, the, I want the screen to not be here, I want the screen to be in here. Okay, let's do it, let's do it from the beginning. You can hit the post directly and cut off. Good, right down, good. Now, again, if you have a big guy that can handle it, when he gets the basketball here, and they come off that screen, this dribble handoff, a vertical dribble handoff is even tougher to guard because the big guy can't jump out and, and help. The guy's most likely gonna get hit on the first screen. So as you come off the screen, go ahead, you've come off the screen. Now we've got a dribble handoff here and we get a shooter coming in, turning the corner uh, on the middle here. Okay, good, thanks. All right, is there anything that any of you wanna see or ask a question about? I can zone. Teams want zone. More man to man stuff. I've got. Sorry? Back cuts. Well, you're, you're stealing part of my thing for tomorrow, but I'm going to get into it because this. Uh, this offense, the high post offense that I ran, you can't make the play. Let's set up the two guard front and the big guy here. The one thing about this offense right here, it, this guy wasn't gonna cut off this high post offense until that screen was set over here. So if this pass is never made, there's no movement. And that's exa exactly right. The, the back cut, I mean, tomorrow when we do indi our individual breakdowns, we're gonna work on the L cut to planting and pushing like this. And I don't think enough players do that. We come out with two feet together and we try to beat a guy like that. I think that when a man has the basketball and you've gotta take, you've gotta get into him and uh, like with an L cut, and, and it, like we'll, we'll talk about this tomorrow, but attack the top leg, hand out, catch it, sweep it, and, and that, now you've got a chance to go. That's the L cut, the V cut is the same thing, only when I come up, I'm making a V cut, I'm planting here, and I've got this whole side for the back cut on this offense. And if, if we can make that pass, that's how we do it. Um, are you here tomorrow for this? I can do a complete breakdown tomorrow from the wing on the back cuts, because all of these offenses, um, are predicated on the sweep and being able to get open on the wing. Even for the big, I've designated this guy in the trail offense as a big, and we know when we go in to play somebody in the NBA, this guy's a reverse man. He's the guy who's gonna reverse it. Well, other teams know that, they start denying it, and that's how we came up with the dive play. But we also came up with, you know, take your man down, catch it here, and again, sweep it to that side, look for your partner inside, and do that. And that's kind of the progression that we're gonna to make tomorrow uh, to, to you know, finalize the stuff that we've done here today. Okay? Anybody else, Any other, anything else that they wanna see? Quickly go over a press offense. Uh, this is um, Jack Donahue put this in. Um, Wow, like back in 78, the first year that I played on the Canadian national team, and uh, he explained it and broke it down, and uh, I used it today, uh, or, and this year with the, with the Toronto Raptors. Um, it's just, it's all about spacing, it's about breaking a press, and nobody's ever really hurt, uh, hurt us with a press um, on it, but it's, uh, we use it as a warm-up drill every day too. So we, we'll do like three-man weave and we'll do full court stuff to get everybody running. And then we'll just go press offense and it's four trips down the floor. Okay, I need the four-man to take the ball out of bounds. I need the five-man at center court. The one and the two right here. 
and three men directly, under, directly in line with the basket down there. All right? There's four different things that can happen. Okay? We're going to set, first of all, when you take the ball out of bounds, you, you want to make sure you clear backboard. You're right-handed. You want to be able to, like this, so you can make a pass if anybody else is open, if a team gets up. Go ahead, set a cross screen. Every time you set a screen, what did I say before? If you want the basketball, what do you do? Set a screen. So you cannot forget that you have to be available once you set the screen. I want you to set a good screen, but as soon as you do, you've got to become available as well. We want to get the basketball here. Okay? Now, every time that you're going to get trapped, we want to give the man getting trapped three options. All right? All right. Don't go anywhere. You're right here. Stay right here. All right? The first one is called side. All right? Side. You're going to go straight here, straight across, straight across there. Now, so that as soon as the ball gets entered to this side, you go across there. If the ball got entered to the other side, you're going sideline there. Okay? So as the ball comes in here and he gets trapped, he has to have three different places to look. 45, right there. Good. Side, middle, and back. And these are the things. They can't guard all of these. All right? If there's a trap here, they can't take away side, middle, and back. If they do, you just do this, okay? You count, because that guy's wide open. All right? We can count to five, okay? And we want to look at them in order. All right? We want to look at them in order. So we want to look side first. If he's open, we want to give it to him. As soon as we give it to him, Stop, right there. Okay. Now, your foul line extended. Come on up. Your foul line extended. You don't want to get too far away. All right? As soon as the ball goes there, you're straight across. Stop. As soon as the ball went here, you also recognize that it's gone side, so you, it's not going to be middle. You're done. So as soon as the ball goes there, it's a straight sprint right down the floor. Right down the whole floor. Hold it. I want you looking side, too. All right? So as soon as you get it here... You catch it, and we're going to look side here. We're going to get it here. If there's one guy down here, if, you do, if he does a good job breaking down here, and this guy comes running out here, you're going to have the pass in here for the layup. Okay, let's make this pass. You guys are done, so we're filling the play. S stay wide, four man. All right? And we're, and we're down. We've broken it. Okay? Let's take it out again. Same positions. Stop. Where's the first place you look? Right. Okay, let's say that was taken away. Okay? Now we're going to go middle. That's the second place to look. All right? Middle, you got to be right here, ready to have the basketball. When you catch it, all right, you have to pivot. All right? You know it's not going back, so you're going to trail the play. Okay? Why did you go there? Nope. It, only if it goes there. All right, so you stay in the middle of the floor. All right, you've got it here in the middle. All right. We've got it there. Hold it. You're here. As soon as you see it go middle, you've got to come back to create an angle over here. All right. You're going to put it on the floor. You're going to pivot. All we see in the basketball, hard pivot, and go this way. You're done. You made it. He didn't give it to you. You run that wing. We're going to attack right here with three men. Okay? Let's do it again. Let's go middle. Actually, let's do this. Let's go side down and middle back. Okay? Good. Now we go middle back. Very good. All right, take it out again. Are we hitting the reverse? This time we are, yes. All right, those first two things are taken away. Let's do it slow. Okay, stop. We look here. They've taken this away. We look here. We can't get it to the middle. All right? We reverse the basketball. Stop. All right. Ball didn't go to you. You know you're done, right? 
he, he looks at you and he throws it to somebody else. Your job is finished. You're the release guy again. You're coming. That's why you don't go on the first one. The ball goes back. Now you've got to come to this side. You're right up here. That's it. Well, if you can, if you can clear half court, we're better off. Okay? That's why you might want to be closer to the top of the key than the free throw line so that you can get here for this. All right? As soon as you didn't get it, you're going straight down the floor. Keep going straight down the floor. Stop right there. Left turn, right to the sideline. Good. Big guy, you were right here. You saw that the ball went back. The ball gets swung there. Stop. You have to come here. All right? Why do you have to come here? Exactly, exactly. So that if the trap now comes over here, this guy with the basketball, and this is all about the triangles and the angles of the game, this guy here has the same options that he's always had. He's got three options, side, middle, and back, if he gets in trouble. All right? Most of the time, we've switched the ball to this side of the floor. We've got the ball over here. We're going to be able to push it right up there. Go ahead. And you go right down the middle of the floor, and we, and we trail on that play. Okay? Let's go. Three trips this time. Side, middle, and then back. Ready? Look. Get there. Side. Yeah, that's it. Good. Good. Last one. All right. Here we go. Get it in. Or the last one, probably. Once we get it in, we're good. All right? Because they can't. And, and the idea of all this, let, let's just go through back again. Let's just go through back. Go through. And we're going to throw it back. We're going to look side, we're going to look middle, we're going to throw it back. Stop. Okay. This is all part of the geometry of it. If they've got a guy up here taking this away, and a guy taking this one away, and two guys here, all right, then what we've done is we've accomplished what we want. We have four players in this one quarter of the court right here, from the center line over to here. So when the ball comes to you, you've got it. what we want to try to do is we want to try to get it as far away from this quarter of the court as we possibly can. And we know that that's the guy that we're looking for. So here, again, and it goes back to the sweep that I was talking about, it's a catch and it's a sweep, one, two, and we want to push it up and we want to get it to this quarter of the court, as far away from the four defenders as we can, and we'll get, we'll get something out of that. Okay? Let's set it up again, and the last part of this, so we've got side, middle, back, the last part of this is when we can't get the ball in bounds, all right? And we've done the screens, they've done a good job, they've switched, and they take this away from us, all right? And this is where you have to call front, all right? And you have to recognize, you have to recognize, and you have to recognize, you can't get it in because you're being fronted. So we just call front, 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 and what you do is you run right down to the block here, you run right to the corner, all right? Now, guys, if they're gonna front you right down there, we've got them where we want them, because now we're gonna throw our, we're gonna bring our big right here, and we're gonna throw it nice and high to our big, and we got you breaking out one side, and you breaking out the other side, and we break the press that way, okay? Okay, let's go. Test for you guys. We're going to go side, middle, front, back. Or, sorry, side, middle, back, front. Got it? Here we go. Very good. Floor is very spaced which is what you want to do when a team presses you. Good job looking at all three. And the last one is the front. Everybody's got to call it. Call. You, you got to go opposite the ball, okay. wherever you throw it. There you go. Yeah. That's it. Good. 
Very good, you guys. That, 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 you guys did a good job. That didn't take that didn't take long at all. I would have I would have a lot of confidence that you could uh, you could break a press there. All right, uh, questions? Anything? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Guys up here, we're going to run reverse. So we've run our early offense. Early offense, you come down, point guard's taking it to one side of the floor. Our trail big is here. Our first big is down on the block. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yep. All right, you've come down. We've looked at it here. We don't get it. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to reverse the basketball. All right, so we reverse it. We swing it over. Okay. As soon as he swings it to the next side, all right, flex cut right off. Looking for a post up here. Okay. This is the one where we want to get the guy on this side. We want to really attack with a strong two man. Okay. They're going to try to take this away. If he can post up, we're going to post up. If they take this away and they front, this is where we're going to get them. Four, you've screened across to help us get the ball back again to another side. Good. And now you're coming in the lane. One, in the lane. Two, throw it. And you're coming off both of them as well for a shot. Yeah. Is that it? The wheel action. Let's go through all the way again. Let's go. Yep. Called reverse because we're just we're guaranteed we're going to reverse the ball. We reverse it once, we reverse it twice. We even use the big after he swings it after the first reversal to use, set the screen so that we can get the second reversal on it. Go ahead. Flex cut. Go hard. You're the guy we're trying to get the ball to. We get the ball back to our primary ball handler. We got one. Come on off. And two. There's the wheel. Got it. Thanks, guys. Any other questions? Yes. Yep. Great. I got a great one. Uh, we call this Nate because we stole it from uh, Nate McMillan from Portland Trailblazers. All right. I need a uh, two man take it out of bounds. Or, yeah, two man. Take it out of bounds. It doesn't matter really. What we try to do is we just try to balance the floor in a way where there's confusion and you play a two man game and see how they're going to guard a single screen and roll. Um, so we have, um, well, we would put DeMar. Why don't you actually, why don't you take it out? What, come on up here and play this spot. All right, you're going to be the big right here. All right. And you're going to set this screen. All right, so we're going to cross these two guys, and these guys are really more decoys than anything else. All right, but we're going to make it look like we're setting a screen so that the big guy might get caught up and they might switch. If they, if they switch a big guy off or he takes a step. Uh, so a lot of times we'll, we'll just... We'll sometimes we'll run this guy, he'll loop around and we'll just set this screen and they have to guard this and the big guy has to respect it a little bit. All right? But you're going you're gonna to go straight to the corner and look for the ball. Now, a lot of times that pass, will, that pass will get there. But when you set this screen here, all right, and you come off of it and you don't get it, the big guy will help a little bit, but you've got to keep going hard to the corner. You're, again, a decoy. As this big becomes separated, we've got what we want right down the middle of the floor. All right? So he's not going to be able to do as much as we want. You're going straight up, and we're just using this screen hard to the basket either way. Again, if the big is slow in recovering here, most of the time he's going to come here. But again, you're the guy that plays run for, right? Because... What did I say before? If you want the basketball, set a screen. If you set two good screens on this play, all right, one for that guy, your man helps, and then one right here, and he helps, you're going to come right back down the middle. Your play is going to be either the two coming off the four right here or the four right down here. 
Okay, here's another real quick one. Uh, uh, I need uh, my four and my five, actually flip sides, flip sides, and two and three right here. Short clock, this is the one we use for a short clock. Um, it's a little bit risky uh, because there's nobody to help at all, but we've had, a, we've had some success with it. If this is my best sealer, all right, my best sealer, actually, sorry, I, I switched you guys, go ahead. As soon as, we, as soon as we slap the ball, you're going hard to this corner, you're going hard to this corner, all right? And you're gonna attack this guy, all right? Now, obviously, the guy playing here is going to have to be like, he's got to be like this, otherwise we're going to give him the basketball. So he's going to have to be here, all right? As soon as these two guys go, the guy guarding here is kind of like in a position where he's trying to help. You're going to the top of the key, and as the pass goes in, up high, yeah, that's right, you've got me sealed right underneath here. All right, back it, up, back it up again. Now the timing on this, you know, obviously something you practice, but you step in hard to me, like right, right, that's it, good, good. And then seal me right there and in. Now, we actually, with a short clock, we don't even have this guy come down with it. All right, it's, it's up here, it's high, and it's a lob, it's a catch and a throw in. So it's, a, it's all a timing thing. So if three seconds or less on a shot clock and out of bounds, it's a pretty good play, all right? So again, just back it up. Go ahead, slap it, go hard to the corner. Right, and again, both of them are high over the head passes. Yes? Four. Four seconds on the side out of bounds, okay? All game long, all game long we've been running, uh, take the ball out of bounds, you're sorry, you're underneath there. Um, side out. Good. Five right here. Four here. Two in the corner. No, sorry, two, you, you stay there. You go in the corner. All game long, we've been running a simple pin down to bring the ball up, set the pin down, to a high screen roll, like this, and with the, with the, so we could get into it. Or the other thing we'll do is, uh, I'm, I'm big on that single action that I showed you of our early offense, so we'll get the ball here, and we'll just send this four man to hit on a quick pin down over there. And bring it here. Four seconds or less to go. Set up in the same set. All right. This is what I would do on this one. I would send this guy through to the strong side. You go down and get him. So this is kind of a play I'd run for Damar a little bit. Bargnani would be the second big. And you're coming right here. And so they're used to this play. We've been doing it most of the game. Tomorrow would come up off the screen here, like this, plant, and look for the alley-oop over top, and most likely not going to get that, again, because this guy's going to help, and as soon as he helps, that's when we would step back and take that one. So, I, I, I mean, again, this is, all, this is all feeds off of what we would normally do. Like I said, we have, you know, two or three uh, plays that, out of this set during the game where we would just pin down, bring a guy to the top for a high screen roll, or pin down, bring the guy for the single action. So they're going to see the same type of set, only we're going to clear out the weak side. If they try to deny that to DeMar, if there's four seconds and they don't deny that, then uh, we would let him catch and use the Bargnani screen and try to go all the way with an open side, which he's very good going to his right. He could take it all the way. Um, if they come out and they deny that, we think we have a chance at the lob. And if we don't, we got the Bargnani here. If there's enough time, he's got the dump in as well. Idea is put your two best players in a position where they can try to score. Anything else? All right, thank you guys. 
just, um, I have to tell you, as coaches, we go through, uh, you go through different things and you always have to believe, as in life, everything happens for a reason. And um, when I got let go from the Canadian national team, I, you know, I, I was devastated. I thought, oh, this is, this is bad. And even this year, you know, not coaching the Raptors, it, 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 was, it was like, how can, this, uh, how can this kind of stuff happen? You know, I don't, you know I, this is what I do, and it's what I love to do. But um, things happen for a reason, and things, and things bounce back. And uh, um, four years ago, uh, Coach K uh, asked me to be involved uh, he said, with the U.S. team. And he said, uh, you know, if, he, he, on the phone, he called me and he said, we are the best basketball players in the world, but we do not understand the international game. And he said, you've played in three Olympics and you coached in another Olympic game. So uh, would you mind coming in and just teaching us the international game? I said, no, that's great. So I made it. I had to fly to Vegas and meet with the team and the coaches, and the coaches met the, the one night before, and I made a list of the 10 things that were different in the rules, and, you know, I had a little story behind each one, you know, the NBA, you know, you're not allowed to touch or hand check the guy, and, um, you know, that, that's what hurt us in the Olympics in 2000 when that French kid put his hand on Nash's hip and just directed where he wanted him to go, and he kept him going uh, in the one direction, and we, we never changed sides of the floor, the part of what I talked about today. Um, so, you know, that, that was the one thing. I talked about uh, shot clock, uh, you, you know, uh, and the length of the game. And I said, you know, 48 minutes is a big time. I, I said, you know, guys like Carmelo, you, you can't take eight shots in the first quarter to find if you got your shit going today. You got to, you know, we got to, you, you, every possession matters in a 40-minute game. And that's why in the NCAA there are so many, uh, there's so many upsets and, and it's so much fun watching. Um, so I, anyways, I had my list and I went through my list and he was, Coach K was just like, this is great. He said, this is unbelievable. This is, this is fantastic. He goes, can I ask you another thing? What does the rest of the world think of us? <laughs> and I said, uh, well, they, they think, you know, probably the NBA, you know, very selfish. He goes, yeah, we're selfish. We're so selfish. You know, and, 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 you know, there's a sense of arrogance, too. He goes, I know, selfish, we're, we're selfish and we're arrogant. Uh, okay, tomorrow, when we meet with the team, he goes, Jerry, and he says, Jerry Colangelo right there. He goes, Jerry, you're going to introduce me. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to introduce Jay. Jay, I want you to go through those 10 things that you showed me, and then I want you to tell those guys, too, about what the rest of the world thinks of us, that we're selfish and we're arrogant. I was like, okay, okay. And I went back to my room that night, and I was just like, what did, I, what did I just agree to? <laughs> How am I going to say this? And um, I walked into the meeting the next morning. I swear I did not sleep a wink. I'm looking at, I'm looking at and it's Le LeBron and Kobe and Dwight and Bosh and everybody sitting right there. And I'm about to tell those guys that. But Jason Kidd walked up to me and he said to me, he said, uh, hey, Coach, uh, Coach K told me what you're going to say. He said, don't hold anything back. This is what we need to hear. And I was like, oh, okay. So that made me feel a little bit better. But I still, anyways, I did it. And um, uh, the players were like, you know, uh, and then I started talking about, yeah, you guys are selfish. And they all kind of look up a little bit. And everything. Anyways, they got the message. Um, but the experience of the whole thing. And, and I guess by doing that, they keep inviting me back. Because I, every year I have to give the same speech. Um, <laughs> But the one thing that really resonated with me was that when I was 18 years old and I played for Jack, Jack had the national team tryouts, and he called the first team meeting the next day, and he said, uh, before, he said, tomorrow when we meet, he said, I want everybody to write down what your goal is, what your personal goal is. And um, I remember going back to my room and writing down, I want to play on Canada's national team. And so the next meeting we came in, and Jack says, he said, uh, all right, did everybody write down what the goals were? Everybody's nodding their head. He goes, now, how many of you wrote down that your goal was to play on Canada's national team? And I put my hand up. He goes, get the hell out of here. And I looked at him. He goes, this is Canada's national team. And you've already made it. Now our goals have to change. So you have to change your goal. I'm going to give you another day. So tomorrow I want you to write down what your goal was. And I, wrote, I remember writing down, well, I mean, I, I guess I had accomplished my one goal. I wanted to play. I wanted to win a gold medal. And so I wrote that down on a piece of paper. And, I, and he goes, and then the next thing, and Jack was big on this uh, goal setting. 
and write your dreams down, whatever they are. If you write it down, you become more committed to doing it. He would tell us every day. That every, if you write it down, there's a better chance that you'll accomplish it. Second thing is put it where you can see it. And he would have us over to his house so many times. And he would have a little note on his desk. It was to dream the impossible dream. And that was his goal was to beat the United States. And um, he said, I look at it every single day, and that's my motivation. And then his, Mary Jane would come in, and she'd say, tell him about the tape. I guess every morning he would wake up, he would push play on a little cassette recorder that was beside the bed. And he, they pulled it out of the bedroom and pushed play, and it was the theme from Man from La Mancha, which was, you know, to dream the impossible dream, to fight the unfightable foe. And I guess that's how he started every single day. He would play that. That's my, and that was how he would get up every day. The very first meeting that I went into with the USA team, what struck me and took a little bit of the edge off of the speech that I had to give was that Coach K on the end wall of the, building, of the room that we were meeting in had the American flag and draped through it was a gold medal. And, he said, and, and that was on the screen and it was as big as the room. And he told the players, he said, every day we're going to come in here and that's going to be on the screen and that's why we come to practice. And that's why you're taking time away from your family. And that's why you're NBA players. But, and, you, and you put aside your summer to, to win that. And he said, even if we just come in here to be reminded that the bus time is at 4 o'clock, I want you to see that because I want you leaving here with that as the memory. And, and um, I just kind of wrote notes. And I was like, I remember Jack saying that. Put it where you can see it. Then the next thing was he, every player had a binder. And on that binder was that picture. And inside it said the path to how we're going to get here. And it had every single practice broken down. It had every travel day, every game that they were about to play. And honestly, I walked out of that meeting the very first day. And I said, they're going to win the gold medal at the Olympics. I, I just know it. I mean, it's already done. It's just a matter of following the plan right now. And sure enough, they did. And then last summer, or, or summer of yeah, 2010, um, you know, Mike D'Antoni couldn't make the trip, and because I had worked with the with the younger players, my job for the for the four years prior to the Olympics was I had uh, Westbrook, Durant, Derek Rose. Uh, Iguodala, Rudy Gay, I had all the guys that were not on the Olympic team, not the LeBrons and those guys, and we would practice in another gym uh, in Las Vegas, and my job every day was sitting in the coaches meeting was be like, Jay, put in Brazil's offense. So one day we'd come in and we'd be Brazil, and the next day we'd come in and we'd be Argentina, and we'd, we'd make all these guys. So it was great, but we hung out in, a, in a, an auxiliary gym, which was boring, and waiting and waiting and waiting, and then we'd go in and get the shit beat out of us. Um, but but it, it, it was a great experience doing that. And I just diverged for a second. The one day we beat them, we played zone because they weren't used to playing zone. And we played this tight little 2-3 zone and we had them, like, we just had them all bottled up and it was, it was, uh, they couldn't score. I think we beat them like 20 to 6. They just, they, they struggled, which we thought they, w they might against the zone. And our guys were like, uh, zone, zone, the chanting on the bench and everything like that. Anyways, the next day, we're in the other gym, and we have to come out. And this is the day where we're going to scrimmage for 20 straight minutes. We're just going let, to let it go, referees and everything. And they said, they're ready for you. And we, so we walked through the door, and we kind of stood in the corner, and they were doing a, a, a seven-point defensive drill where they were going, and it's like Kobe, LeBron, everybody, and they were like dripping, and they were like, die, 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 die. help, 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 die, 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 die. This is, was try. close, 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 help, 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 and then somebody would run right down the middle of the floor, and they would take charges, boom, and they were going, they were not holding back, they were running over each other as fast as they could, and I've never seen NBA players do this, and the guys that were sitting over here with we're watching these guys doing it, and they're like, no, 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 charge, boom, guys are going right through the wall, and they're just like, so we're getting killed today. <laughs> and we did. <laughs> and we did. Anyways, um, I got the chance in 2010 to, uh, to be part of the staff, sit on the bench. Uh, every second game was my breakdown. Um, and we ended up winning the gold medal, which was great. And, you know, I, I look back and I say things happen for a reason. And had I... Um, you know, I thought back to when I was 18. The first thing I thought about was when I was 18, I wrote down, 
I want to win a gold medal. And, at, and this was at the World Championships. And it wasn't for the country that I wanted to do it for, but things happened for a reason, and I, and I had a chance to do it. Uh, I remember cutting down the net, and the last time we cut down any kind of net was in 1983 at the World University Games in Edmonton. And I've still got that picture of Jack Donahue doing it. And I cut down the net in uh, Istanbul after we won the Worlds, and I took a piece of that net, and I took it to his grave. And uh, it just, because it, it just, all of a sudden, 18 years later, it was like, he told me, if you write stuff down, it'll happen. And sure enough, it, it did happen for me, and it was, uh, it was a great experience. So anyways, I share that with you, and I'll see you tomorrow.